In 20 plus years of doing this job, five speakers, five, have captivated me in ways that go beyond just sounding good. Connecting with me on like an emotional level, leaving behind this indelible memory that I carry forever. I'm talking about the Bang & Olufsen Beal Lab 90, Wilson Audio's Watt Puppy, Bowers & Wilkins 800 series, the Clips La Scala, and now... You guys have been asking forever for us to review something from the R line, and we finally have it. The top dog in Kef's R line, the R11 Meta. This towering three way loudspeaker features a total of six drivers four six and a half inch bass drivers, a five inch aluminum cone mid range, and a one inch vented aluminum dome tweeter that features Kef's matte or meta material absorption technology. Now, the tweeter rests inside the larger mid range driver in what Kef calls a UniQ driver array. Now, others may refer to this type of driver arrangement as being similar to coaxial or concentric. Regardless, the speaker six drivers and two rear-facing ports combine for a reported frequency response of 46 hertz to 28 kilohertz. Now, Kef notes that the R11 has a typical in-room bass response of around 26 hertz, though it, that's at negative 6 dB. So, don't be surprised if the R11 meta feels like it has greater bass extension than its specs would lead you to believe. Despite a sensitivity rating of 90 dB, the R11 meta is a true 4 ohm speaker that can dip as low as 3.2 ohms, which means a pretty stout amplifier or pair of mono amps is recommended. We used four different amplifiers in our evaluation. The Technics R1000, Audio Labs 8300 XP, along with my Mini DSP SHD working as a preamp DAC, Crown's XLS Drive Core, again using the SHD as a preamp Preamp, and lastly, Marantz's brand new Amp 10 with its matching AVP10 processor for some high-end home theater fun. All worked well, but my absolute favorites were between the Audiolab 8300 XP, Mini DSP SHD combo, and the Marantz gear. Whether using the Kefs for two-channel or home theater, I recommend an amplifier that has a solid 100 watts or more on tap and that is truly rated to handle 4-ohm speakers for absolute best results. Now, the R11 Metas are a masterclass in design. Kef makes some of the most design-forward speakers in the business, and the R11 Metas, for me, is their best yet. The attention to detail is astounding. Grills on or off, the R11s look and feel like a truly Cosmo object speaker. The speaker comes in three finishes, black gloss, white gloss, and walnut, and I'm not the biggest fan of gloss finishes, though the white here is drool-worthy and features a paint application that's better than most speakers in this class, with no dimpling or spider webbing to be found. The only part of the speaker's design that I don't like is those stabilization feet. They're very heavy duty and they do help the speaker from being wobbly, but they are a little out of place with the otherwise streamlined design. When fitted with our aftermarket ISO acoustic feet, they look even worse. I wish I could put Martin Logan's new motion kicks on these speakers because then we are talking perfection. While these speakers sounded good where 90% of other tower speakers performed their best, they actually improved quite a bit in our room when spaced further apart. I ended up placing them about three feet off our front wall with 11 feet between them instead of the usual nine to nine and a half feet. This put them 12 feet from our primary listening position. I found that a little toe-in was all that was needed to lock in their center image in stone and prevent too much bunching to one side as you moved off axis. This is a speaker that likes room to breathe and is definitely well suited for large spaces like ours. So with the placement nailed down, I did a couple of quick sweeps 20 to 20 from our listening position at a reference level of 75 dB just to see what the R11 metas were throwing down. From about 40 hertz on up to 2 kilohertz, this speaker is near as makes no difference, ruler flat. It is as neutral a speaker as we have seen in our new space. There is a subtle roll-off in the high, starting at around 2 kHz, but even the roll-off follows a completely predictable tapering line with no noticeable peaks, making it a very smooth operator. I don't doubt Kef's claims about this speaker's frequency response. However, my room does have that node hovering around 40 Hz that I correct through the use of a subwoofer. Using the new Reference Premier 1000 from Klipsch, I applied some minor room correction and bass management and obtained near textbook linearity from 18 Hz to 20 kilohertz. Now I'll be the first to say that specs don't matter if the resulting sound doesn't move you, and the R11 Metas sounded as good subjectively as they performed objectively. It only took one 
one playthrough of Everloving by Moby for me to fall completely head over heels in love. The complete lack of cabinet coloration, dead accurate dynamic shifts, and overall focus top to bottom was just captivating. For such a large and potentially imposing speaker, there is a transparency and just a level of three-dimensionality that is difficult to put into words. Nevertheless, the R11s transported me to the heart of every single recording in ways only the Clipped La Scala has done. The R11s prioritize agility and accuracy over grunt or excess weight. So when directly compared to speakers in its class, like Martin Logan's new Motion XT F100, you may feel as if the Logans have more impressive bass. The Motions definitely play lower in our room, but the bass isn't as refined. It's a subtle difference, or maybe not so subtle difference, but it's noticeable. Those who like extra crack or slam down low will likely side with the new Motion speakers, but when it comes to accuracy, and nuance from about, say, 40 hertz on up to the mid-range, I'm not sure that I've heard better than the Kef at this price point. Still, for true full-range playback, a subwoofer is still required. First, let me just say, there are no audible gaps or boosts in the speaker's response as the sound transition from the bass to the mid-range on through to the tweeter. This is one hell of a coherent tower speaker, and its mid-range and treble performance are exceptional. If you're looking for a speaker with inherent character or its own unique charm, the R11 Meta is not going to be for you. But if you're looking for a speaker that will present you with the most accurate portrayal of what is in the recording, keep watching. Vocals or dialogue, male or female, sounded as true to the artist's natural timbre as one could hope for. Intelligibility is very good, naturally clear without any sense of artificial boost or accentuation in the upper mid-range and treble. In other words, this is a speaker that isn't applying any sort of sonic filter or trickery to draw your attention to any one aspect of its mid-range or treble response. The tweeter is so good and, and so delicate. Apple Music's Piano Chill playlist specifically tracks with a lot of trills in the upper register, they sounded brilliant. While the tweeter may not be made from Fabergé eggs or whatever high-end tweeters are made of these days, it sounded every bit as refined as some of the best, most esoteric tweeters that I have ever heard. As you might expect, this big tower speaker has room-defying scale. When set up correctly, the R11 Meta's image like a pair of small two-way bookshelf speakers completely disappearing orally inside one of the more dimensional and holographic sound stages I've heard at or near its price. In my experience, only larger, more complex speakers like Wilson Audio's Alexandria or the Active Biolab 90 would provide a better sound stage and grander sense of scale. The definition between the speakers and even beyond their boundaries is impressive, as is depth and vertical scale. It is just an encompassing sound that can be as delicate or as grand as the source material calls for. And when driven by a capable and compatible amplifier, the KEFs are dynamically fulfilling and even enjoyable at lower volumes. Now, if you don't plan on regularly listening at levels greater than, say, 75 dB, you may want to check out the smaller speakers in the R line. Much like the bass performance, you will find accuracy is prioritized over absolute explosiveness. For absolute maximum, raw, unbridled impact and reflexes, the La Scala, it, it's still the top dog in the dynamics department, but the Kef is more nuanced. Compared to our Cornwall Force, you get more layers of contrast with the Kefs. The kick drum during the bridge of the noose by a perfect circle kicked just a little bit harder and had more snap with the Cornwalls, but damn, if that point of impact and resulting decay wasn't more present and defined through the Kef. Which is best is ultimately going to be up to the listener in the end. Nevertheless, the Kef's dynamic prowess is its impressive. A real quick note on the R11 Meta's home theater performance. If you have the means to build a home theater around these, do it. It's hard to think of a better option than the R11 to build a cost-no-object Atmos system around. I loved watching television and movies. Their center imaging and ability to scale was so impressive. I have never felt as if a center was even required to either understand dialogue or fill any gaps that may exist across the front of the soundstage. So scenes from Top Gun Maverick, Deepwater Horizon, and Burlesque, they were all next level. I'm going to use this time to compare the Kef R11 Meta's overall performance against some of my absolute favorite loudspeakers of all time. 
My favorite 800 series from Bowers & Wilkins, the 800D2, is no longer in production, but it remains a speaker that I still kick myself for parting with. In a lot of ways, the Kef gives me those older B&W vibes. I'm, I'm not saying they sound exactly the same, but they do have some things in common, like an attention to detail and the ability to play back every nuance that's locked in a recording. Now, back in the day, the 800s would run you somewhere around 20 grand, and they are even more expensive today, which makes the Kefs a freaking steal by comparison. The iconic La Scala still ranks among the best audiophile experiences I have ever had in my life. And the same is true of my brief demos with Bang & Olufsen's Lab 90. I would still rank both of these speakers above the R11 metas, but the La Scalas are not kind to all genres of music, and like the Lab 90s, they are massive and require a lot of space. At over a hundred grand for the pair, the Lab 90s are prohibitively expensive. For most of us, they're going to be, um, you know, if I win the lottery type of speaker. And this is where I think the Kef R11 Meta comes in. When it comes to audiophile refinement, but maybe not absolute scale, Kef joins the conversation with speakers like the Lab 90 and Wilson. Only, you don't have to fork over a down payment on a house to get them. So, absolutely, all things considered, the R11 Meta may be the best all-round speaker that I have ever heard, easily ranking in my personal top five. Now, compared to the more similarly priced speakers from Martin Logan, specifically their new Motion XT F100, the R11 are more refined and more accurate. The F100 is still a phenomenal speaker, but the difference in performance, it's noticeable. I prefer the Kef, but can totally make a case for the Logans, especially if you want a bit more top-end energy and low bass kick, not to mention a few more bucks in your bank account. Now, I know you're all going to ask, and it's unfortunately not even close. Yes, I'm talking about the Polk R700s. While the Polks can hang with the big boys on a lot of levels and is a speaker that I am still happy with to this day, Putting them up against the Kef R11 Metas head-to-head -head on the Technics R1000 revealed what's possible by investing more into a pair of speakers. This was about as night and day a difference as I think that I've heard from the Polks versus, well, anything. So if you were to ask me, Andrew, what would I have to spend to get an outright just better speaker than the Polks? Well, the R11 would be my answer. I think it's pretty obvious by now, but I absolutely adore these speakers. There isn't one thing, apart from maybe their feet design, that I would change. They are, for me, a near-perfect loudspeaker. And while they may not be cheap, they're a far cry from what you typically need to spend in order to achieve audiophile nirvana. So, Kef, well done. Well done. So that's it for me and my thoughts on the Kef R11 Meta. I don't think there's any need to go further or any other <laughs> opinions, but I know you guys are going to ask. You're going to care what she has to say. So come on. So here's where I validate everything you say. <laughs> I, I agree with you. They are amazing. They are very, very good. Yeah. Um, you know, when we were sitting down to finalize this review, mm -hmm. I, I said to you, okay, I need one more go mm -hmm. at the uh, Martin Logans yeah. because I absolutely love those speakers. Yeah, I was like, I, I have to listen to them side by side, directly a being. Mm -hmm. And so we had a whole afternoon listening session. Hours. Hours. Hours, people. <laughs> In the end, yes, I think I pr I do prefer the Kefs. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where I'm going to tell you or remind you that knowing what type of listener you are, yeah, being honest with yourself about the type of music you like is going to play a huge role, in my opinion, yeah. in which one of these speakers, specifically the Martin Logans or the Kefs, which one of these are going to be the best for you. Sure. Here's some yep. examples. I love the Be I love the Beastie Boys. Mm -hmm. If you like that kind of music, one of my favorite favorite songs from the Beastie Boys is "Sabotage" off the album "Ill Communication." Okay. If you like that song, they sounded to me better on the Martin Logans. Mm -hmm. However, going over to the Hello Nasty album, the song "Intergalactic," hundred percent the Kefs were better. Yep. Now, if you're into '90s era uh, music, mm -hmm. think. 
No Doubt, Stone Temple Pilots, Blind Melon. Okay. I think that you would probably prefer the Martin Logans because there is more weight down low. Sure. They, and to me, they just sounded like I remember hearing them when I was driving around, you know, in my, yeah, in my younger days, Mm -hmm. listening to the music on the radio, Mm -hmm. which let's face it, it is more compressed. So that more, more compressed music does sound a little bit better on Martin Logans. Yeah. And I'm sure you could probably explain the, scientific reason behind all that i i I think i know why yes yes (laughs) um it comes down to the fact that the logans not only do play deeper but they have that boost which we noted in the martin logan review they have that boost in the bass the folded motion tweeter of the martin logan um is not it's not bright or shrill or anything like that but it definitely does not roll off like the kef so um it's kind of like the martin logans are kind of like hitting to a certain degree, I'm not saying all the time, but to a certain degree, they're kind of like hitting the loudness button on an old school amplifier or receiver uh, when listening to those types of tracks. And that 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 can be exactly what those types of tracks need, or it can also speak to how they were mixed. But across the widest genre of, or widest range of music genres, the Kef proved to be more favorable than not. Um, and so I don't disagree with you, believe it or not. There were some songs that I felt, no doubt especially, that I felt the Martin Logans were more favorable to. But I will say this. I didn't realize, like the Martin Logans throw a stage. They've got a good sound stage. They have great center imaging. That is, that's not in question. But I did not realize how much they kind of compressed depth until you get the kefs. Oh, totally. Now... There's a couple of comparisons oh, boy. that I have a feeling people are going to ask about. Okay. Um, I'll try and be quick. You tr- let's try to be quick. Okay. Uh, Rapid fire. There's only two I'm going to ask you about. Okay. Um, the Wharfdale Elysian Four Towers. Kef R11. Well, I, I mean, I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, not that quick. I'm um, not surprised yeah. you chose those. I would choose them too. Yeah. But I, I think people might be interested in actually knowing how they compare. Um, they're actually very similar. And I went back and I compared all of our objective data of both speakers. Um, They are very comparable. I personally prefer the Kefs um, on two fronts. Physically, I like the more streamlined look, the simplicity of it. I know they're both gloss finishes, and I really kind of railed against gloss finishes on the uh, Wharfdale. But I just think what the Kef is just a very clean, you know, monolith that I I like. the Elysians do kind of like the Logans have a little bit sense, uh, a greater sense of bass. They are more composed and more detailed down low compared to the Logans. So if you were like, oh, Logans versus Elysians, the Elysians are the better speaker, but they should be at twice the price. Um, but they are not twice as good as the Kefs. And in many ways, the Kefs actually prove to be a little bit more defined and accurate in the mid range and especially in the treble. And in terms of soundstage and dynamics, hmm, the Kef has better vertical scale, which probably comes as no surprise. Um, dynamics, I, I could go either way on this one, but soundstage, I I believe the Kef has just that little bit better definition. And so that is why I choose the Kef R11. Um, just because we reviewed them recently and I okay. have a feeling someone, one one person will ask. <laughs> uh, the DevTech Dimension Towers. Ooh, yeah. Um, similar size. So call me a hypocrite. <laughs> um, I, I, I did say that the DevTechs were kind of big and imposing and the Kefs are really no different. Um, goes to show you what finishes can do to kind of mitigate a speaker's size. You know, that giant black sock, there's just no really kind of dressing that up. Whereas the Kefs grills on or off, I mean, they look kind of sculptural. They look I kind actually of, really love the grills. The grills are great. There's probably one of the few speakers where I'm like, yeah, grills can stay on. Um, look, the, the dev techs are just an insane value, not unlike the R700s. And if you know what you're doing and you set them up correctly, they can do some pretty amazing things where they're let down is that sometimes that woofer needs to be in a different spot. 
for those low, low bass notes. And in our room, that is very much the case. Uh, second, that tweeter on the deaf text is not my fave. It's not my fave. Um, if they were to put a slightly better tweeter in that bad boy and maybe institute some PEQ to the subwoofer that you could adjust yourself, I think, and of course, address the finishes, you may have a little sleeper, you know, a little sleeper in waiting. In terms of scale, though, the deaf techs actually do better than the R11s. They do. And especially in a home theater environment. If you were doing a home theater and you're one of these people where it's like, I want to feel it in my plums. The Dev Tech is going to do a little bit better job than the R11. Now, the R11 is going to let you hear into any film's mix or soundtrack in ways the Dev Techs just aren't going to do. Um, so I would still, look, if you only have money for the Dev Techs, you only have money for the Logans. You are, those are two great speakers. I stand behind both of our reviews of those products, and I do not fault anyone for choosing them over the R11 Meta or any a lot of other speakers, to be perfectly honest with you. But if you're like, I think I'm on my last stop, like I said, the Kef R11s join a list of five speakers for me that I'm like, I could, I could stop. And in a lot of ways, because I've had to move the R11s out of this room to make space for, you know, reviews that are coming up. In a lot of ways, every time I have to move the R11s, I'm kind of like, man, if this wasn't my job. <laughs> if this wasn't my job and if I didn't like talking to all of you guys so much, I'm like, I, I just want to sit them, forget them, and just be happy because that's that's what they represent for me. So anything else? Yeah, just one more thing because okay. you brought up home theater about mm-hmm. the deaf techs. Mm-hmm. The Kef R11s are among, if not maybe, the one of the best. They may be the, maybe the best in terms of being able to understand actor dialogue when watching TV shows or movies. Mm-hmm. I really never struggled at all yeah um so yeah i if you struggle Mm -hmm. with this kind of um these kinds of issues like me Mm -hmm. the kefa r11s are going to be fantastic in that regard anything else nope all right that's it that's now our review of kef's r11 meta loudspeakers i want to thank you all very much because you no doubt helped to make this review happen. You guys have been asking, Kef no doubt noticed, and finally we were able to bring this to you. So I hope it was worth the wait. Uh, Obviously, we enjoyed the hell out of ourselves bringing you this review and getting to spend time with these speakers. So my question of the day for you is simple. What do you think? What do you think of the Kef R meta line? Sound off in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we both do here. And we thank you very, very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File. That's it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.